This time we learn a bit about Flying Cone's history, we continue the never-ending job of preparing the hull for painting and we remove a very stubborn sea strainer. The big task for this year is to get the hull fixed from the outside. We hope this could be achieved by good pressure wash and a little bit of paint. However, when we hauled out the boat, we discovered a very severe corrosion damage. So now we are facing a labor-extensive, very expensive and extended time in the shipyard. Hello, it's so good to see you again. I'm Barbara and together with Daniel I try to bring this neglected steel ship back to life. This time we continue to remove a stuff on sea strainer so that the shipyard can eventually access the through hole and weld the chart. We will also continue to de-rust the waterline and prepare the hull for painting. And we will use the amazing opportunity of three trawlers representing different areas of shipbuilding right next to each other to learn more about Flying Cone's history. But before we start into this video, I want to thank all our supporters on Patreon and Paypal. It would not be possible to make these videos without you. Thank you so much. Since there was so much going on during the time in the shipyard, unfortunately the videos are quite behind real time. But we do offer real time updates on Patreon. So if you want to get more involved in the upcoming decisions, then please consider to become a Patreon. And now let's bring you up to date. So far we ripped out all the interior from the saloon, underneath the aft cabin and in the fossil. And removed a lot of dusty old cork insulation together with some frames. After that the lads from the yard repaired the very big electrolysis damage. And we called in an expert who discovered a very big hole. But we decided to continue this project anyway. And while the shipyard was repairing the hole, we continued with massive destruction. And removing the tank from hell. Eventually we started de-rusting the waterline and preparing the hull for painting. So what's up next? We are quite interested in Flying Cone's history, so we felt really lucky when three generations of fishing vessels were on the hard right next to each other. Daniel decided to use this opportunity to nerd out about high shapes and Flying Cone's history. The only difficulty was the other two ships had to get back into the water the very next day. And to achieve this, the shipyard had to do extra hours. So it was a bit noisy when we filmed it. Today we have three generations of trawlers next to each other and I want to show you all the differences and similarities of these three boats. And I want to say that it's very difficult today to tell you about that because uh, usually they work until half past four. Now it's six o'clock and also there are firecrackers and it's re really noisy and it's quite annoying to talk about this but I really want to show you that and it's the only possibility. But before we continue nerding out about high shapes, we are still in the middle of a refit project and last week we started to remove a lot of unnecessary piping unnecessary piping like our only wastewater pipe. So now let's continue with removing a stubborn seawater strainer. After Daniel gently removed the annoying pipe, now it's my turn to loosen the nuts again. Moving? Yeah, it is, I think. But it's still quite rusty. No, I won't film it. <laughs> Why? So no one knows that the nut just came loose because you told me how to do it. While we still try to loosen the nuts, let's go back and talk a bit about Flying Coney's amazing hull shape. Let's start with Flying Coney and she is the oldest of these three boats dating back to at least 1950. Her design was probably developed by an Austrian gentleman named Fritz Meyer. And Fritz Meyer, when he was younger, worked in the yards that built the famous clipper ships. So he was influenced by the shape of traditional sailing vessels, but then used more modern technologies like a towing tank to make the, the hull even more efficient. And he designed this, this hull shape in the 19. 20s. Okay folks, that's all true, but we later found out that Flying Coney was originally built as a herring logger and not as a four Boston boat or Kriegsfisch cutter. So the design is even a little bit older and closer to sailing ships than the design by Fritz Meyer Daniel just described. But Daniel will talk about Flying Coney's history before 1950 a little bit later. So it's a mix out of a modern uh, ship with an engine and a sailing ship hull with a very a very sharp bow and a really nice shaped fluid line all along the hull and the most obvious design or building 
element that's, uh, that's different to the other boats is the riveted hull and the plated hull, which is a more older building method. So now let's move on to the second ship. But before we move on to the second ship, there still is a stubborn sea strainer in the engine room. Quite a bit of water. Maybe there is a hole at the bottom where it can empty. <laughs> you mean at the bottom of the hull? Yeah, of course. We haven't found that one yet. Do you think it's heavy? Quite. Then I think the best idea is to Lift it together. No, oh, I think it's not too heavy. It's lift over. What was meant to be an easy exercise for a quiet day turned out to be a four hour wrestle with pliers, with hammers, with the angle grinder. I almost killed myself with the angle grinder. But finally we have removed the sea filter and now the sea valve is almost accessible. So it should be an easy task for the yard to weld it shut. Okay, this ship here was built in the 1960s. I think it was 1965 or 64, somewhere around that. And the biggest difference is that she has a welded hull and not a riveted hull. But if you look closely, the hull shape itself, it still remains the same shape as our ship. There are quite a lot of similarities. Only in the midsection, this ship has more volume that she can carry more cargo. Also, we know quite a bit about Flying Coney's history after 1950, the year where she was officially built. We don't know much about the time before. All we do know is that there must be a before. There are four reasons why we strongly believe that. First, the riveted hull. Second, her hull shape. And third, if you are a ship nerd like me and have looked at thousands of photos of fishing vessels of her former home port, one can make the educated guess that this ship was built in between 1910 and 1930 as a lugger with a sailing rig and an auxiliary engine. And since we want to convert her to a sailing vessel, that is really good news. Because these old luggers had the perfect hull for a sailing ship. 
There are some other converted lagers still around like the Bellamy, the Yankee and the Lotus. And all of them are fast, seaworthy and beautiful sailing ships. One explanation why Flying Coney needed to be rebuilt 1950 is that she was probably used for minesweeping after the Second World War. We are in contact with some organizations to find out more about her history and we are thinking of making a video about her story. So let us know in the comments if that is something you are interested in. For de-rusting the hull we use different tools. Wire brushes, terco and CSD discs. And after testing all of them I can say that each has their own benefits and most of the time we use the combination of all of them. I'm sure most of you know what a wire brush is and we will talk about the terco in an upcoming video. So this time I will focus on the CSD discs. We mostly used it to get rid of big areas of rust. It is really quick and in contrast to the wire brush, it doesn't smear the paint or works the rust into the steel. And it is not like a grinding disc. It just takes off the paint and the rust, but it doesn't grind away any good steel. The downside is you can't get into small corners and they are expensive. We easily run through a pack of them a day and they are about 25 euros. Anyway, the finish is good and they are fast. So I put a link for you in the description. And now on with bow design. Here we have the most modern of the three ships, built 1985. And you can see that her design is much different to the bow ship you've seen before. There are much more edges and in my opinion it's not as beautiful, not as fair, but it's a compromise because this boat was solely designed as a motor vessel, motor fishing vessel and I'm sure there are reasons why they built the ship, they built it that way. Also you can see that the hull is quite different with less area here and it's much more rounded compared to the flying coney over here which has a lot of area here and the quite sharp bow section. And what's funny is that the ship, the second ship, is almost a mixture out of the two generations here. One thing you probably don't know about me is that I absolutely love watching other refit projects here on YouTube. So every time you recommend a channel in the comments, I can almost guarantee you that I'm already watching it. To be honest, Flying Coney probably would not exist without Tally Ho. It was the first refitting channel that I watched and I do often say that Leo owes me a beer for talking me into such a big project. He does make it look way easier than it actually is. But joking aside, it really was the main reason we started our boat search. After we visited many wooden boats, we eventually came to the conclusion that while we really enjoy to work with wood, a wooden boat is not the right choice for us. And after a two year search, we eventually stumbled over Flying Coney and fell immediately in love with her. And we are still very glad that we found her. 
With all that in mind, I do find it quite hilarious how similar those two boats are. Well, I mean there are some obvious differences, like Dally Ho is a wooden yacht and Flying Coney is a steel ship, but still there are more similarities than you might think. They started their lives roughly 100 years ago, Tally Ho as a yacht and Flying Coney as a sailing lugger, and later on both competed in famous races. Throughout their lives both were converted several times. Flying Coney started as a fishing vessel and was converted into a sailing ship and Tally Ho obviously was built as a yacht but for some years even she was used as a fishing vessel named Escape, with a wheelhouse and all that. So if you hear me talking about other boats and comparing Flying Coney with other projects here on YouTube, it's just because I simply love watching them. And now let me know what you think. Another huge difference between Flying Coney and the more modern trawlers is the propeller. Generally speaking, the bigger the prop, the more efficient it is. But under sails, this benefit turns into a downside, because it also introduces more drag. So Flying Coney has a relatively small four-bladed prop, which is much better for sailing. But in our case, relatively small still means a diameter of about 1.2 meters. And don't even dare to ask about feathering or sailing propellers. They are just prohibitively expensive. And second, we don't have a cord nozzle. And now let's see what a cord nozzle actually is. That thing here around the prop is called a cord nozzle and it's also a more modern feature because it makes the, the prop more efficient but it's only good for a motor vessel and not so much for a sailing vessel because it also introduces a lot of drag so it's good on the engine and not so much while sailing. Now let's move on to the third ship built in the 1980s Especially at the stern, you see that it is a completely new design and has almost nothing in common with our ship or with the ship you have seen before. Uh, it was built in the 1980s, I think 1985. And also look at this size of the prop. Just look at it. And also interesting fact, the bigger the diameter of a prop, the more efficient it is usually. So, also an interesting difference is that you see the round shape of the stern here and here it's a flat stern. Thank you very much for watching this video to the end. If you want to see more of us, here's the complete playlist. And we would very much appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button. Because it shows us that you enjoy watching our videos and appreciate what we are doing. Because putting all this work and effort into these videos without getting much approval can be very frustrating sometimes. So your click makes a huge difference. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.